Michael, and this is sounding though. I mean, if this was the nineteen seventies, you would be, people would look at you and go, you, you, "What? You're a commie bastard." Uh, you know, is this? You know, they, they, they would they would be saying to you things like, um, "Isn't this just communism?" Now, tell tell us about how this differentiates from from communism, and um, I'd also like to hear from all four of you on this particular matter. I mean, you've got this, this kind of idea has been bandied around before. What is so unique about Ubuntu now that makes us different? Well, first of all, communism is is, uh, is has never really been implemented. You know, we I don't want to get too caught up in talking about communism because the the communism in its purest form, the way it was presented and its at its beginning was never actually implemented. It was hijacked and distorted. And I'm sure Stephen will have a, a lot more information about how, how the 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 Bolshevik Revolution was funded by the bankers, which which I've also write about in my book. Uh, and so you realize that the, the whole, the, the, the pure <laughs> philosophy of people working together towards a greater heart, benefit of all the people uh, was hijacked and turned into uh, Leninism and Stalinism and Bolshevism and, and all these other, um, other things that, that came out of it, which was really just a dictatorship, which was just using money. They were still using money. So what, what Ubuntu and contributionism says that we can start using money for the benefit of the people to move ourselves away from the use of money eventually completely because we actually don't need money. We need people because people do everything. Money does nothing. And right now they're being hijacked by the corporations in this concept called the job, which, as Louise eloquently pointed out, um, is yes. taking people away from what they should be doing, which is growing food and telling stories and spending time with their children and families and communities. So, so just to add to this job thing, remember that, and that, that is again a construct of our schooling system and our education system, which is also a construct of the bankers, which is really the Carnegie's, the, the Rockefellers and the Carnegie's were very involved in setting up the current education system that we have, the banking families, because they realize that they're going to have to create, have to create a dumbed down labor force in future with certificates look, going out looking for jobs. So the entire education system that we had is funded the research institutions, the, the, the universities, all these are funded by banking families. Well, you just and have to look at that. Uh, if you go to almost any university these days, the uh, various expert branches, what would you call them? Divisions? Uh, not divisions, but the, the... Faculties. Faculties, thank you. That's what it, The faculties of these research institutions are nearly always sponsored by the high-powered uh, uh, corporations. So if you're a medical, if you do a medical degree, they'll just so happen to be a Pfizer research laboratory, which is funding a whole bunch of research. And they'll be next door just be happen to be you know engineering firms for the engineer I, I, I do understand that um, but I want to go back to this and get and get um, Stephen's input and everybody else's as well Stephen is there an element of communism in the Ubuntu philosophy and to what extent is this what extent is it um, comparable no I don't think there's, there's any uh, remote connection with communism uh, communism is a brutal system enforced by the bankers in order to e exploit uh, initially Russia and then uh, China and the other East European countries uh, it, it, it's not a uh, it's not a, a natural system and uh, it can only be maintained by force so uh, that, that's why it, it never succeeded 